Thanks, Goose. Isn't it funny how Goose's house looks just like an ABC office? Yeah, totally sus. <laughs> Bartow, do you remember a few weeks ago you were telling me that you were all zombied and ninjaed out and you are hoping for a game with some pirates in it? Yar. Yar. Risen 2 Dark Waters is from the creators of the Gothic series, and the first game didn't make it into Australia due to being refused classification because of drug use and sexual activities being used as an incentive or reward. And, but it doesn't really matter if you haven't played the first one because the second game doesn't rely on you knowing what happened before. Instead, it sets you off on a whole new adventure. You play as a hero with no name, but he does have a fancy eye patch. Go bother someone who gives a damn. And he's faced with the unenviable task of defeating a bunch of otherworldly monsters called Titans in order to prevent the annihilation of mankind. So what do you want? Your first quest is to find a legendary magical weapon that has the power to defeat an awakened sea monster, the Kraken, that's terrorizing ships in the region. I love a good Kraken hex. Yes, but Badge, dare I say, giant squid. It's all a bit Pirates of the Caribbean, the RPG, isn't it? What have you got for me? Yes, it's voodoo, supernatural, and pirates all smooshed together. Plus, big scary crabs. Ugh, they're gross. Playing a pirate-themed RPG is quite refreshing, though, isn't it? Yes, it makes a nice change from the normal fantasy-based stuff. Yeah, no gothic architecture. It's a tropical setting. Straight off the boat on your first quest, you've got this big island to explore. It's a sprawling, murky jungle full of dangerous wildlife. Warthogs, crazy monkeys, spear-wielding savages, giant bugs. Risen 2 throws you in there and gives you the opportunity to poke around and figure out where to go and what to do. It's actually quite easy to get a bit lost. Yeah, and the environments, they're so organic and it all feels quite mysterious. The locations are the strongest part of this game, and you can fast travel too if you get a map from someone like the governor. I did like how you have to get some better clothes though before you're allowed to see him. <laughs> yeah. I need to talk to Di Fuego. You'll have to put on some proper clothes if you want to see the governor. Yeah, that was a nice first objective, wasn't it? Straight away you realise that this isn't going to be a predictable set of quests. And I always appreciate when an RPG, you know, properly reflects in-game all the gear that you equip to your character. And when you finally get your hands on a proper pirate hat, it just makes you feel all the more authentically piratey. Yar. Yar. Yeah, and it's a good thing too, because you're surrounded by some seriously salty sea dogs. Nice cannons you've got here. Piss off out of it. I'm busy. I'm doing it. Like fuck you are. I'll handle this. Leave it out. I'll fucking do it. Like fuck. Can we finish this later? As you wander about the place, you can collect a variety of plants, hack at the odd vein of gold, and even learn some crafting skills. I've always been interested in gun making. This isn't an open world game. It's much more focused with quite a linear storyline. But you know, I quite liked that. I never felt overwhelmed by things to do and it was quite easy to finish quests. I'm looking for Steelbeard. Not that the game throws the rewards at you though. You really have to work hard for your gold. I just, I never had enough money. I was always down at the beach trying to scrape together a few oysters to earn some measly coins. I really liked that though. I thought that made the rewards all the better. I always got excited when I heard about some stash of treasure that I could go and dig up. <sighs> Let's see what we've got here. And when you plunder its contents, it's a true reward because you finally have enough cash to go and pay a trainer to learn a new talent or buy some better gear. I think there's always a fine line when stuff is too expensive, but I thought they did a pretty good job with it. I know, I just hate being poor though. I mean, it's not just about the gear, there's just so many skills and talents to purchase. Gold makes me happy. You can ask a tough guy to teach you better combat moves. You need to fight with balls. Or get a dodgy character to teach you something a little bit more underhanded. I bet you could teach me some really dirty moves. Then there are also talents to charm or intimidate in conversations. There's lots of options to, you know, really carve out your character, which I thought was great. Although I found it really annoying that, you know, you had to work so hard for some of those more advanced combat skills, though. Yeah, when you first start out and you're just whacking people with a cutlass, it feels pretty Stop bad me. and spammy. When you finally learn how to kick an enemy back or perform a powerful strike, it does start to improve. I did like that you could equip a pistol when you're offhand for a bit of an Indiana Jones moment. 
Overall, I thought the combat was pretty clunky. It's a bit better with a gamepad, though. The dirty tricks were a nice idea, though, I thought. Throwing a coconut to try and knock someone out or chucking sand or salt in their face. They've tried to do something a bit different here, and, you know, I, I liked that. I think the main problem is the stiff control of your character. You know, it just doesn't lend itself to fluid action. Yeah, I can put up with a lot in a game if that combat is fluid and enjoyable, but it just wasn't here. Enemies can get some cheap hits in, too, especially when you can't recover to block. There's also a kind of magic system in Risen 2, the power of voodoo. I am daughter of the chieftain and a voodoo witch, so be careful. Ah, okay. I'm just a pirate. You need to learn this from the natives deep in the jungle, where you'll be taught skills like building voodoo dolls that allow you to temporarily possess other characters. It's great being able to troll other NPCs to solve puzzles. This brave pirate killed Crow. I mean to shower him in gold. Are you sure that's uh, wise? Yeah, that was a clever idea. I also enjoyed unlocking the monkey training. Having that little guy to play around with was just wonderful. Sneaky. Go on, little guy, get the loot for Papa. You see, that's a good example of how this game's offered some quite original little ideas. You can tell I've had a lot of fun with the pirate theme, and I think my favourite part of this game is just the design of those quests. Everything ties in really cleverly together, and the islands are self-contained enough that you can clear everything in your logbook before moving on. I still thought some of those quest strains weren't explained enough. For example, I almost gave up on the game at one point because I thought it had bugged out, but I'd simply accidentally sold something I needed for a quest. It's a pet hate of mine. Quest list? Inventory. Bajo, I think while this game wants to be a AAA title, it's not the most stable engine, is it? I mean, it's the kind of game that looks really beautiful one minute and then glaringly low budget the next. There are some flickering textures and that jumping animation. He just he looks like he's skipping or something. Yeah, you'll probably rack up a few glitches in your first few hours. Go now, or there will be trouble. And I love how casual they are here. Alcazar sentenced me to patrol the perimeter. <laughs> Barca said it would be good for me. A nice juicy steak, that'd be good for me. Has anything been happening? All quiet, no maluckers, no pirates. Well, except you. I also thought the AI was just too inconsistent, but I did like the way they react when you snoop about the place. You bastard, think I'm... They're instantly onto you, but then there are other times when you sneak up on them and you skewer them with your sword. Keep that thing away yeah. from... But then they're only just offended and they get back up. There is no reason why I should talk to you. Take care. There's some serious logic missing, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think it just goes back to what we were saying before about the game being a bit patchy in places. This game reminded me a lot of Witcher 2, but obviously it's not up to that level of awesomeness. No, definitely not. I kind of want it to be, though. Oh, me too. I mean, it does do a good job of immersing you in the world. I mean, there are some really lovely moments. Those tropical thunderstorms were beautiful, or seeing a ship anchored offshore in a gorgeous sunset. It's a fun world to explore. That lad of yours needs to swear the oath if he wants to come along. Why just him? I could swear too. Over my dead body, girl. Don't tempt me, old man. I enjoyed the witty repartee between the characters, and, you know, I really enjoyed being a part of this pirate adventure, maybe a little bit more than you did, Bajo. Yes. Enough talk. Kill him. Katayopi. What's that mean? It means first we kill the idiot who doesn't speak our language. Come on, then. <laughs> But we should wrap this up. I think this is probably the best pirate game I've played in quite a while, but it does have many problems, so I'm giving it six and a half out of ten rubber chickens. I'm giving it seven and a half. The Commandant's right-hand man is just a protector, but Sebastiano thinks the sun shines out of his backside. And that's bad. It is. We cut your rations in half. 